Okay, uh, I'm hoping for the best on this video capture. I've got the resolution set as high as it'll go, and I'm hoping the audio uh, is coming through okay. I apologize, I've got quite a bit of a head cold, so uh, you'll suffer through that with this presentation. What I want to show in this video is how to do a power law curve fit uh, to some data. And uh, the form of the equation that we want to fit here is shown um, above the cursor. Y is equal to a constant A plus another constant B times X raised to the N power. And we want to find the constants A, B, and N that match a set of data. Here are some data that I've made up and uh, you see plotted here that sort of have that general character. So we're going to try to find some constants A, B, and N that when we use these values of X, we can more or less approximate these values of Y. So I'm going to create uh, a column <coughs> I'll call Y model. And in this uh, column, we'll, we'll, yeah, okay, we'll use these names. Let's create these names. So, uh, We'll try that, and then uh, we'll make some names down here. We'll try that. So now we want this to be equal to A plus B times, yeah, I want it to be X. There we go. Uh, raised to the N power. Uh, he doesn't like that. Those are all zero. Let's give them some numbers. Yeah, he likes it a little better. So right now, I just put some numbers in there, and those are the values that we get. What we want Excel to do is to juggle these values here until these values are similar to these values. So how can we do that? Well, we want to create a cell called uh, minimum. And what we want to make a minimum of is the sum of the squares of the differences between these two columns. We can do that using the <coughs> uh, Excel function sum product that we can take the difference between y and y model and this uh, function sum product does the dot product or scalar product. In other words, it multiplies corresponding entries of two vectors and adds them all up. And so, since we're taking the difference between these two vectors, and if we take those same two vectors in the sum product, when we multiply them together and sum them all up, we get the sum of the squares of the differences between those two vectors. Okay, so that's a pretty big number, but that's the number that we want Excel to minimize. We can do a minimization using the solver feature. You can't do it using the goal seek which is built in. The solver is available in Excel and you may have to add it in. But uh, once you have this available we want to minimize the cell B25 by changing which cells? By changing these cells right here A, B, and N. By default, Excel is going to make these positive constants, and in fact, that's that's what we want. Uh, one a couple of options here that I always want to uh, look at under the GRG nonlinear, we want to make this uh, convergence tolerance pretty small, and I always get better results with the central differencing for the derivative approximation. So if you check those two options, it'll probably help you help you a little bit. Uh, we're not very close to the answer as you can see 
So it's a challenge uh, to, to try to get from where we're starting to, to where the answer is. But uh, let, let's see what happens. Uh, he's come up. He's come up with a pretty good, uh, pretty good answer. He says you wanted it to be minimized, and it's down to 0 0.015. So it's pretty small. So now we can see that we've got the values of a constant that fairly well mimic this data, and we can uh, copy this data and use uh, use paste special to add it as a new. A new series, and uh, rather than uh, let's see, format data series. Yeah, let's uh, change the color up a little bit. We want to put a line there, a solid line, and eh, make it that nice orange line. That's fine, and take off the markers. There we go. Okay. So with that, uh, the, the orange line here is showing the model that we calculated, and the, the dots there are the, the, the Why is this not zero? It's because the, these data points that I made up don't exactly have this form. They're, they're close to it, but it's a little bit different. So that's why these are these are a little bit off. Anyway, that uh, tells you how to do a power law curve fit using the solver feature in Excel.